Um, we're uh, going to send the PowerPoint to your phones, inshallah, um, in your angel power WhatsApp groups. Uh, and I'll wait for you just to be able to open it, download it, and so on. So we spoke about Islam, and we spoke in general about Islam. Uh, we want to speak about the pillars of Hajj. Okay, it's the one that was done from 11 a.m., wasn't it? The last time. Yeah, all right, sending now. Uh, work. Yeah. Uh, so if you message me, I'll forward to you. Okay, sent it, Sheikh. Now, should be there. Okay, you got it. Yes, but it is. Can I open PowerPoints? And I will send it to our group. Uh, and to the Hajj approved, I'll create a group group as well. For those of you who are on that, you should be able to download it now, uh, inshallah. So those are the seminar PowerPoints that we're using. Yes? Got it? Yes. Okay. I can use it down. Change notes. So we were speaking about uh, at the beginning of Ikram, how we're going to get our Ikram into effect. We spoke about the things that are permissible, and we ended with getting ready to speak about the pillars of Umrah. Um, now, because we are going to be doing... Uh, is that yeah. Yes. Power. Oh, that's a power trick. Oh. Someone will come. <laughs> Unless it's in me. <laughs> He's out of way. Shut up. All right. So if you can get to the screen, it's called Pillars of Umrah. All right. Now, all of us are going to be doing Hajj that is Tabatur. As we said, we're going to do Umrah first. Many of us have probably already done Umrah. An actual man who is going to there's many, mashallah, who are familiar with what is needed in your umrah, right? But I want you to kind of think of umrah in three important sections. The first section are the things that are a must. That if you don't do it, your umrah was not umrah. It's not that. Then there are things that are a must, but if you didn't do it, you can fix it after the fact. So there are things that are pillars that if one of them is missing, your umrah from the beginning, it is not accepted. You have to go back initiating it from the beginning. The second are things that you must do, but if you miss them, if you miss one of them, you can go back and fix it. There's a way of expiating it. There is a whole band that you can give that will, you know, remove the obligation from it. And then the third are things that are rewarded actions, things where we do want to gain a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're hopeful that Allah will give us um, khayr and barakah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his claim. Uh, that was the wrong, that was the wrong slide. That was the one. Okay. Yeah. So the other the one. Is it, one. Yeah. It's in the root, it's huh? Similar, yeah. I'm updating the uh, documents well. Again? Send it? Yeah. Let me delete that one. So there's the other one is called Seminar Hajj. You can send that on each other. That one's called Seminar Hajj. One second, let me just. <laughs> okay, so it's one with small in size then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sending. Send. He's sending you to the groups in Shahmar. And you can delete them. 
Yeah, I have. Oh. Would you be sending on your Australia group? I will be. I can do that right now. Okay. I send you a request to another in the Australia group. So both both of them are sent in a second. All right, while we're getting that, I wanted to just finalize your kit bag. What is it that you're going to travel with? All right, pay attention, please. Under no circumstance, under no circumstance, inshallah, if you are traveling with me, will I have you bring luggage to me on the eighth day of Hajj? The only bag that you will be allowed to bring with you, the only bag is, inshallah, a backpack. No roller bag, no bag that you're going to pull behind you. No steam iron, right? No ironing board, right? Why can you not have something behind you? Because people will trip on it. The first soldier who sees you with one of us is going to take it and it's gone. Hello. Sorry, can't, you can't you can't take that. It's like trying to go into the haram. Have you ever tried to go into the haram with a big bed? No, 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 put that here. You can't go in, go back. So if you come with a bed, I'm going to I'm just gonna say cannot. You can't have something behind you. It's a tripping hazard, it's injurious to other people. You need to have for yourself a comfortable backpack. Now, I'm not telling you that you have to be kitted out like a, a frequent flyer or a frequent viral like me. This is my day. So I like lots of pockets. Every pocket I put something in. I like secret pockets where I can put sensitive stuff in. I like to have room for, uh, you know, things that are quick access for me. I'll tell you my preferences for your backpack. You want to have shoulder pads that are um, heavily padded. Heavily padded, don't get a Kmart bag or you want to have a bag that has this. And the reason you want this is because it clips here to keep your bag nice and high, especially for those of you who are in a bed. You are going to be walking, and this will be with you when you are going from place to place if you are carrying an extra haram or if you're carrying something in, right? You are going to leave stuff on the eighth day in there. So when you leave Mecca, you're going to take lots of things in this. Not everything is going to go with you in Arabic. But you will take this with you in Arabic. You're going to have it in your medicine. You're going to have it in your, uh, you know, your scrunchy pillow. This is a pillow, not just for my neck, but also, right? It's, it's multidimensional, right? MashaAllah. It's uh, one of those uh, ones that you can hook onto something that on the plane. So when you put this on the back seat of the plane, it holds your neck in place. So then you're not, you know, you wake up, your, your neck is fine. So you want something that is with a strap at the top. And if you can get a strap at the bottom, it's even a bigger bonus in Chakra. Uh, generally bags, uh, Puma, Adidas, bags that are meant for sports, meant for walking, meant for those kind of purposes, MCAC, those kind of places will be useful for you, and you can see them as an investment. You can see it as an investment in Chakrabah. It will be an investment in your lower back pain. I'm telling you, right? It'll be an investment in your lower back pain. Invest in your shoes, invest in your bag. Um, your bag, what do you put in it? Must, hat. 
when you are out of ihram, because you're going to be walking out of your mouth to go to, you're going to make your mouth when you follow your mouth with normal clothes like this. So you're going to see me with a hat, with a baseball cap, with, uh, you know, umbrella, sunscreen, those kind of things become really essential for you, inshallah. You want to have your hat, you want to have bottles of water, you want to have all of the things that are kind of necessary for you to meet your obligation. What type of clothing am I bringing? In my backpack, I got, so I'm going to travel with three pairs of pants, one that I wear in the mornings, one in the afternoon, one that's washed in the car, and just for uh, Linen, sports, vented, under armor, adidas, very light, very breathable, right? Tucked at the bottom. You can pull it up when you're making wudu. You can walk with it like this, right? Shoes. Um, nice, thick soles. These are Adidas, nice, thick ones. I have new ones that I usually wear. Sketchers, uh, the reason I like these, they're just slip on. You're good to go. Uh, get thongs, slippers, whatever you call them, that are one piece, that are not going to melt on the side because the asphalt of the heat of the sun, 45 degrees, as you are walking, it's going to melt the glue, right? It's going to melt the glue of your little slippers. It's going to make the rubber expand. So if you have that little dog thing and you're wearing the thongs, fill a or whatever, forget about it. You're, you're on your own. Huh? So don't get one of those where you got your, your toes in the middle and it's because the what happens is it expands, pulls right through. All of a sudden you're walking and you're missing a shoe. You want something that thick, insulate between the asphalt and your toes. You will literally, if you stand in certain places for a while, you will need a stain of plastic. That's how hot it will get. May Allah protect us All right. Uh, these are Kmart, are no, cotton on, $10. Take two. These are Target, super fluffy, cloudy. It's like you're walking on clouds, mashallah. $19. Nothing super expensive. The ones that I normally wear are green ones. They're Birkenstock ones. They feel better on my foot. They take in the shape. I'll have all three with me, child. I'll probably leave two behind. They're going to get worn out. Your feet will sweat. Go aside. The heat, the humidity, your feet, mashallah. With all the walking, it will sweat. So don't get something that just fits. Get something that is comfortable. That you can uh, be comfortable in each other. Uh, for those of us in MCDC, you will get something similar to this. This is the normal dollar seven kit. It is uh, you can I, I recommend you get one from GK or one of these places. Don't get a cheap library bag one. Get a proper one. Fit. You want one of these that has a pocket on the inside, pocket on the outside. You want to be able to put. If you want it to be waterproof. You want it to uh, be able to have your extra ephraim in it. This is going to be your quick change bag other than this. So when you leave this in Mina and we're going to Arafa, you're going to have a little, a smaller bag. You're going to put in it all of your non-melting energy bars. You bring chocolate, you're on your own here. <laughs> no chocolate. Even if they're M&Ms and they don't melt in your hand, they say. In Mecca, they do. Right. So get something that is healthy. I'm not saying these are healthy, but get something that is healthy. This is what I have in my this spot. No chocolate, nothing that has melting capability. There are two chargers that are used in Mecca. The main one will be UK. The UK. The second one you'll find in Europe. Right? Usually the UK. In the hotel, you'll probably be able to come to Mina, Arafa, Muzdalifa, you're on your own. There will be 
very little charging capability. And you need your phone, and then the, your phone will deplete. So this is about a kilo and a half of weight, heavy. But it's worth every ounce of strength to carry. This charges my phone six, seven times. Right? So it'll cover me for one or two days. Without it, you will find, uh, and you will need your phone, because if you get separated from the group, if you are being pushed with a wheelchair and you're coming up behind us, those kind of things, make sure that you are traveling with a good, heavy duty pack. The best place is to kind of get them JD Hi Fi. It's too late to order online at the moment. Uh, walk into a JD Hi Fi, kind of look at this something that's going to charge my phone five to six times. I got an iPhone 4. What do you recommend? Right. I usually carry one that's dual. It can do, you know, USB, other things. And this is, uh, this is as precious as Jenna Hunter. <laughs> they have people watching. Oh, yeah, can I have some juice? <laughs> this is untouchable. I need this, right? Because myself and the other guys were in constant communication. Um, one of the, uh, the points about uh, out of that, and I wish I, I could tell you some of the photos, but I would tell you a whole bunch of chat a lot. Um, all of us, we kind of picture the stuff that we see on satellite TV, where everybody's standing on the mountain, and they're all dark, uh, you know, gathered there. Uh, you are not going to see that. You will not be uh, under the 50 degree sun. You are not going to be sitting under a tent. Uh, under a, an umbrella trying to shelter from the sun. You are from the few of Ujibida who, because of your package, are able to have an air conditioning. So you're not going to, and you say, Sharon, I just want to go see it. I say, you can see it on TV. <laughs> you want to see it? I can send you a YouTube link. <laughs> but if you don't listen and you go out into the crowd, I cannot come for you. Uh, every year, there's one much more energetic other. Uh, usually, they make it back. <laughs> usually, I say, usually they make it back and can find us. So I'm not saying I won't let you go, but I will tell you don't go. But you're welcome. I will not deter you because I'm going to look at you. <laughs> don't do it. It's a bad idea. Don't. You will not. You will not uh, be able to to get to there. Uh, and return and find our pen unless you kind of are navigating really well and have good geographical understanding. And that is in all. So, a lot of people, they picture the prophet standing on top of the mountain. The prophet never stood at the top of the mountain. His energy was further away from the mountain, near where our camps are, in fact. Right. So, where we are in the prophet, it is a large plain of Allah. It's not the mountain of Allah, it is the plain of Allah. That we will gather to, uh, inshallah. Um, Mustarifa is a walk or uh, a bus journey uh, from Arafa. All of us we will be in buses, inshallah. You're going to get onto your bus, and the buses are staged. It's done by lottery. So each tent they will draw. You know, okay, this district. Let's see which buses go first. And a lot of people are very excited. Oh, we want to go to Muzdalifa. You don't want to go to Muzdalifa, not first or second or third, because Muzdalifa, everybody in Hajj is there. But now they're there and there is no tent. So I usually offer my place in the I say, MashaAllah, you're a lucky day, you can go. I usually ask that we are the last to exit out there. And all of the food you get to enjoy. The bathrooms, I pay some of the cleaners, they say, go clean all the bathrooms for us. I'll get you to have nice showers, change your dick on. You'll see me. We are just yeah, it's good now. But what happened? I will make you out of the love of moving crap. Why? Because we stay the only one. Inshallah, we get to leave out of the same 11 o'clock at night. 12 o'clock at night. And we'll pray Madrid and Ishaq together, inshallah. We'll pray in Muzdalifa. And I will give you two hours, three hours rest. That you will dawn at us 4.30, and our hands is at the edge of the Muzdalifa Amina. 
you will be the first to walk through, inshallah. As soon as the dawn prayer is done, لبيك اللهم لبيك I will get you up and we make our way inshallah. All right? And from Muzdalifa to the Jamalat, it is a walk. We will see what permissions are given to us because they stage the entrance into the Jamalat. Every stage, they, you know, all these contacts with other groups. Sometimes they will say, we're getting off this road, everybody come by. Us. All of you, inshallah, in our group, in the faith group, you will have earpieces. So you will hear me all throughout our conversations, inshallah. Every time you see I'll, I'll, I'll be in your ears. Everybody can be people who are not happy to the front and in the back, assisting, keeping us all together, uh, inshallah. We'll make our way to you now, and then we will uh, set forward to the rest of the day. All right? Umrah. We arrive into Jeddah on the plane in Ihram. So while we are in uh, Kuala Lumpur, inshallah, for those of you who want to change out of your pants and wear the bottom one for men, you can keep your underwear and things on, on the plane. And then as we get closer, you will be able to go to the south. One of the blessings of Saudi Airlines is that they have a special prayer place, but also it's a change room. So we close it up, brother after brother, they go in and get changed. Two hours before we get to Jeddah, you will cover yourselves up, you will grease yourself up, you will get yourself ready, inshallah. And as we are getting towards Jeddah, I will say to you, everyone, let's make our the outcome of each group, or we'll do it on the announcement. The first lady is ours, the Kandu Bida, the Bayt of Allah, and the Oh Allah, we have come to fulfill Umrah. And then when we do our head, we will say the Bayt of Allah, and the Once we exit Jeddah, we're going to be held until the bus arrives. The natural question is, Shab Yab Yab, when is the bus in this event? And there will be this, mashallah, broad smile. Uh, some of the longest times I've spent was 10 hours, 11. We don't know how it is this year. Other times, two hours. <coughs> Depends, right? Depends which flight you're coming in. But we are going at a busy time. The third and fourth and fifth of the pitch yeah. is when everybody is kind of making their way, right? Everybody is kind of making their way. So this will require a little bit of patience. We will pray on Islam. We arrive there at night, around 9 p.m. for those of us who are on the key of flight, inshallah. We're probably going to pray Salat al Fajr in the Haram. With our umrah either before, during, or in between. By breakfast, you will be back at the hotel, change, shower, buffet, and shower. But don't eat too much because you need to be light and loose and ready and shower. So that's the, the kind of plan for them. Can I ask everybody to turn to the first um, uh, uh, thing that I sent? So the one that I sent doesn't have the, uh, the Arabic. The first one I sent did have. I, I sent the, second one, the, the second one doesn't have the Arabic. Okay, Is that what you want? Yes. That's on the Hajj group. Just begins, it have, yeah. Uh, That's the one on the Hajj group. Yeah. Seven, 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 okay. Can I have everybody get onto this? Okay. Yep. Uh, days of Hajj. Yeah. Right? The Hajj timeline? Hajj timeline. Yes. I can send it to you. Yeah. Facebook. Yes. All right. You don't put it there. All right. I've sent it again, Sheikh. In Hajj group. So are we opening up the timeline now? Yes. Am I sharing that? Okay. Yes, uh, which timeline? Yeah. 
All right. Hajj timeline. The assumption is, alhamdulillah, we've completed our umrah. Now the four pillars, yes, sister. Sure. Uh, in the days of Hajj, before, before Hajj, it will be up to you to see if you have the energy. In my group, I will dissuade you from it. I will ask you to reserve your energy for Arafah and protect yourself from injury. Because it's you will say, I will let you decide when you see it, when you go, inshallah. Yeah, bismillah, take a taxi to a Tan'im, to Masjid Aisha, and carry on, inshallah. So we're going to assume that we have completed the Umrah. What is Umrah? We put on our Ihram, we spoke about Ihram. We've made our Tawaf. We've gone to Safa and Marwa. We've cut our hair. For the men, they always ask, Shaykh Yahya, should I shave? I say no, right? For your first Umrah, for Tamattu'ah, uh, leave something, yani. Some of us are already challenged as is it is, right? So don't show off. You know, with one brother, he's like, oh, Shaykh Yahya grows back so quick. I say, mashallah, mashallah. Uh, you're, you're blessed, brother, <laughs> right? So leave, I will, I will recommend for you that you don't shave. You do qasq for the umrah, and then you can shave, insha'Allah, for the tawaf al-ifada and the sa'i and the tahallul from, from our major hajj, insha'Allah. So the umrah is going to be very straightforward. I'm going to send you, insha'Allah, uh, you will have in your package um, uh, a umrah guide, a hajj guide. I really wish I could uh, have put it up on the screen, insha'Allah. Khair, insha'Allah. But I will follow up with messages for you, each and every one of them. I have um, uh, a one page folded that you just printed and it's folded. So it's an A4 that you fold it together. It has, this is what you do in the first step of Umrah. This is what you do in the second step. This is what you do in the third step. This is what you do in the fourth step, inshallah. The reason I'm not speaking about Umrah now is that that is going to be my discussion with you in Malaysia, inshallah. We're gonna spend a little bit of time Al-Bayt and MCDC group together. We're going to do the whole Umrah, inshallah. If you are also interested, this Thursday at our school, Al-Amin College, we have a recreation of Hajj. It's called Hajj at Al-Amin. From 3 till 6 p.m. Uh, mashallah, I, I, we built a 3 meter by 3 meter Kaaba. Arafah is huge, mashallah. We took a whole stage. and yeah, So it's going to be all the kids are involved. It's a wonderful thing. If you want a walk through Hajj, I recommend you join us, inshallah, this Thursday, 3 till 6. You are all welcome. There's food trucks and it's a whole fun day, bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. So Umrah is done. You're ready. On the eighth day, what are we going to do? This is your Hajj timeline. Everything you need in Hajj is on this particular document that I have before you, inshallah. It is anticipated to be Monday, the 26th of June. What are we going to do on Monday, the 26th of June? We're going to begin traveling towards Mina. It is not a must to go to Mina before Arafah, but it is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And with our group, with MCDC, we will have one person who will trail behind. They will leave directly from Mecca to Arafah. For those who were feeling unwell or needed a little bit more time to recover or whatever it may be, one of one of the mashayikh usually stays behind and they bring back, you know, they bring two or three buses with them one day late. The majority are going to leave Mecca and arrive at Mina before Salatul Duh. And that's why I'm saying, imagine everybody from Mecca leaves and everybody tries to get to Mina when? Before Dhuhr. So, 1.30 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, knock, 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 labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, right? I will, I will ha you will have your bag ready, you will be ready to roll, inshallah. We will get to Mina, we will pray Salatul Fajr, we will go to sleep, we will, it is called the day of Tarwiyah, the day of watering. You will have nice 
inshallah food, nice activities. We're in ihram. We're going to make our talbiyah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. We're going to be in a state of ihram. And we're going to get familiar with the camp, with the routine of bathing and showering with other people there. Now, one of the expectations, inshallah, of Mina is that you're going to be sharing those facilities with people from across Australia, across the UK, across America, uh, you know, just many different places. Uh, the bathroom situation in Mina is important for you to kind of picture it, inshallah. It is the Asian uh, bathroom style where the, the you, you know, you have to crouch. Above you, there is a, sh a shower head, so you can shower. And also, it is a place for, for using the facilities, inshallah, right? Uh, a, a hajj hack is that the cleaners that are there, if you were to give one of them a generous tip of 10 riyal, 5 riyal is acceptable. It's a good tip. 1 riyal is everybody gives it. You're not going to get the luxury service. Right? 1 riyal is fine. It's like a locker. 10 riyal, he takes the debt all and goes in before you. Right? That's the Yahya Ibrahim service. All right? So I told you, take $60 with you and consider it a charity upon some of our brothers who are there serving us in this way. Have small change with you that you are able to get yourself in a comfortable place to your standard, right? Ben, say, whisper to him and say, can you clean this? And just put in his hand. Salaamu alaikum. Can you help me? He'll know exactly what to do. He will go in. He will mop up. He will dry up. He will get everything ready. This is when your life-saving tool will come to be of great importance. So you hang this on the door frame because there's no roof. That's right. You just hang this on the door frame. You take your ihram off. You take your ihram off, your, jub your abaya off, and you slot it in there. You take your belt, where's my belt? And you slot it in there. And you keep it far away from the water, far away from the najasa. This becomes an essential, essential tool. You will forget it in the door frame. So take a pack. Right? I'm just saying, I'm just telling you. <laughs> One sister, she kept knocking on the person's door. I want my <laughs> right so you, you know it becomes super precious super precious this also becomes very precious in Mina uh, because when you enter into the tent in Mina think of an open space in the middle and it just has railings on the side there is no storage place for bags there's no storage place for extra clothes so on the rail at the top you're going to hang your bag and that's why i always recommend for you to have a bag where you hang your bag above you it's in view of you you have your charger in there your cord comes down you have everything at access to you inshallah right bring a pack of six seven of these uh inshallah a plant pot holder so they use it, they use it to hang house plants. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, I didn't forget to bring it. I didn't bring it on purpose. Um, every one of us at some point or another has had a bag that's ripped or has twisted an ankle that they've hurt. Uh, one of the most essential items that I will carry on your behalf is duct tape, right? So I've actually duct taped people who didn't listen to me and didn't buy one of these. Guess what kind of they wore duct tape shoes. Everyone's like, mashallah, <laughs> duct tape shoes, bags rip, the wheel pops off, duct tape. I hurt my ankle. Right? SubhanAllah, I walked Mina, I walked Arafa to Mina with a duct taped ankle, maybe six, seven kilometers, uh, you know, stabilized after it was rolled. 
right? So duct tape is, is something important. You, can, <laughs> you cannot carry it, and that's why I didn't bring it, on your carry-on. They will arrest you. Because I had it in my carry-on. I was going to Hajj maybe five years ago, and I just put it in my carry-on. I don't know why it was in my carry-on, because I travel light. And, uh, you know, the security, they said, uh, can we see what's in here? I said, yeah. They go, what is this? I said, duct tape. They go, why do you have duct tape in your bag? I said, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to Hajj, beg, rip, and, you know, I walked on my ankle. I gave them the whole story that I just gave you. I said, no, 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 no. This is illegal on a plane because it's something that you can buy. buy. So please, no duct tape on any carry-on baggage, inshallah. You can put it in your... Uh, undercarriage, right? But I do recommend you bring duct tape. You'll make a handle for a bag that's ripped. You'll make a shoe out of it. You'll be able to use it for many purposes, inshallah. Eighth day, we make it, inshallah, to Mina. Once we are in Mina, you are going to rest. You're going to revisit your dua that you have been preparing from now for Arafah. Now, I previously sent how to construct your Hajj dua, right? There's a document that I've sent. Kind of look through it. I included an example of the dua that I make for my children. Every year I evolve it, I add to it, I take out of it, I increase it. There's other ones that are private that I haven't included in it, but those are general frameworks for you, right? You want on the day of Arafah. Yes, my brother. I'll send it. Insha'Allah, I will send it for you, insha'Allah. You want to have the dua uh, prepared on paper. Why do I say on paper? Because you're going to conserve your battery for your mobile phone, right? Put it on paper, and that paper becomes a memory. So I actually have a book of all of my Arafah dua from something like 2013 or 14. I have every year its, its own separate binder. And I have all of the dua 20 and up to 2019. And then this year's one, I'm going to print it out. And I take more than one copy. Right? Have it on paper. When you are in Arafah, inshallah, after we pray Salat al-Dukh, and Arafah begins at Dhuhr prayer, we are going to leave uh, in the morning very early to go to Arafah. We'll pray Salat al-Dukh and Asr. That's when Arafah begins. So if we're one of the groups that gets into Arafah early, which usually, inshallah, we are, our buses are usually prioritized. Once you get into Arafah, I'm going to ask you to have a little bit of a meal, lots of water, use the bathrooms before everybody else gets to Arafah, and then I'm going to ask everybody to fall asleep because you will be tired. Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I'm going to take my corner and I'm going to put on my, where are my headphones? There they are. I'm going to put on my noise canceling headphones. And you're going to be talking to me. And I'm going to, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Right? And I'm going to sit in a corner. I'm going to sleep for two, three hours, inshallah. These headphones or others like them are essential for you on the buses, on the trains, on the planes. When you are in a crowd and you just want to be between you and Allah listening to some Quran, you want to just on the on the train to Medina, when you want to disconnect from others, it's also a sign to other people. I have my own time. Hint, hint. Did you get the hint? So when you see these, what does Sheikh Yahya want? MashaAllah. <laughs> hint, hint, right? All right. So when somebody puts this on, usually in the tent, please don't ask them, where is the coffee? Right? <laughs> you, you can make do, inshallah. All right? Take two hours, inshallah. Rest, energize. Arafah begins at Dhuhr time. Inshallah, uh, either myself or one of the other brothers, we will give khutbat Arafah for our tent, for our group. And then we will make dua and another dua. And there'll be brothers who will make dua in Urdu. And brothers who will make it in Bengali. And others who will make it in Arabi. And others who will make it in English. And others who make it in the sister's tent. And it is an atmosphere where everybody is pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the sun begins to cool, I will send you out. Out the tent. To wander around. To feel the 
the buzz of Arafah, not at the mountain, but to feel it. I want you to feel it. And I will let you go out close to where we are. And I will let you find the shade of a tree, find a rock to sit on. And then I want you to spend up until sunset on your own. We'll gather to gain together and make final du'as and so on. But I want it to be your du'a, your 15 pages, 20 pages that you've been writing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've been waiting all this time. I'm coming now. Oh Allah, I will tell you what I am here for. Right? You are standing before Allah for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren 20 years from now that you haven't had yet. You are here for the Palestinians. You are there for everything in your life leads to this moment that you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We will have an online webinar about constructing the dua and that document as we get closer. And I'll remind you again in uh, Malaysia, inshallah. Arafah, it is Hajj. If everybody can kind of just put their hands out in front of them. So the five days of Hajj. The first one, we said water. Getting to Mina early. Eighth day of Dhul Hijjah. A-okay. Easy. Nobody has any trouble that eighth day. Everybody thumbs up. MashaAllah, excited. The day of La ilaha illallah is the day of Arafah. The ninth. Right? Every time you make salah after, you're going to remember this. Every time you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, you're going to remember your day of Arafah. You're going to remember that dua. Right? This is the day of Arafah. Every time, La ilaha illa, that's the dua of Arafah. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulk, wa lahu al hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin khabir. This is Arafah. From Dukh all the way until sunset. We are making dua to Allah, pleading to Allah, begging of Allah, asking of Allah, praising Allah, extolling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, reminding ourselves and others of Allah azza wa jal. We finish the day of Arafah at Salatul Maghrib. We will not pray Maghrib and Isha in Arafah. The sunnah of the Prophet sallam, is that we travel to Muzdalifah. The word Muzdalifah, it means the place you go to be close to Allah. Zulfa, yani. Yeah, you, you're drawing yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you have made your dua to Allah. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ You finished Arafat. فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَلُ الْحَرَامِ Go to a place in that night and remember Allah. You will go looking for the stones, 49 stones. Most people assume that you should pick it up only in Muzdalifa. In fact, anywhere in Mecca, you can get those rocks. Right? You can pick them up before. You can pick them up in Mina. You don't have to search in the middle of the night for the rocks. You can take it from anywhere, inshallah. No problem. As long as it's in the haram of Mecca, right? What they actually do is they actually go to the rocks and they break them down and they put them there for you in Muzdalifah. It's not like they grew, they weren't behind the rock, rock trees in Muzdalifah, right? So they just, they just spread it out for you two weeks ago. They're probably putting it there right now, right? Little rocks that they crushed and they just spread it all over Muzdalifa to make your life easy. So it's not يعني, a plant that only grows in Muzdalifa. <laughs> right? So get your rocks ready before you go or from there. Alhamdulillah, no problem. Sometimes when somebody's ear, you know, it's good for them to go for a walk. And it's good to make sadaqah for those who are tired that you get extra rocks for them. People are going to drop them. So don't just get 49, get a little bit more. You're probably going to need more. You come to throw in, oh, I dropped it. La ilaha illallah. And now where do you look for it, right? So take, take a little bit more with you, fill them up. And it's just any small rock that is, that is natural rock. Uh, I had one brother, he, he brought me a handful of concrete. It was the side of the road, the asphalt was there. It's like, it's not, it's not the one. This is, look, it's, it's concrete. You need rock, rock, right? Yes, sister. Yes. Yes. Dhuhr and Asr together, two raka and two raka. Combined. No, 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 combined at the same time. Dhuhr and Asr in Dhuhr time, inshallah. Depending when your bus gets there. Some buses, they don't get there till Asr time. 
That's why, you know, it's uh, Allahu A'lam. But inshallah, you will get there early. Inshallah. So we spend the night in Muzdalifa. After Maghrib and Isha, we head out to Muzdalifa. We combine our Isha and Maghrib prayer, uh, Maghrib and Isha there. Maghrib Isha is only two rak'ah. We shorten it, as with the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We spend the night there. The Prophet allowed some of his women, Sauda radiallahu anha and, um, you know, and others, to leave early. So for some groups, they will have one batch or two batches of people who leave Muzdalifa a little bit earlier than sunrise. Nothing wrong with this was done by the Prophet ﷺ's family. But those who are able to stay in Muzdalifa, and it is not a difficulty of those who are traveling with them, then it is good for them to spend the night. Usually, usually, uh, I will move forward with my group out of where we are in Muzdalifa towards the border of Mina, that by the time we get there, uh, Fajr is dawning, we pray Fajr and then cross over to go and throw our Jamarat. Where do we go from there? We leave Muzdalifa and proceed, inshallah, this is now the third day. So now we have done two days. This is now the third morning, which is the day of Eid back home here. Everybody, inshallah, they don't fight over the moon, right? Inshallah. The third day is going to be the day of Eid here, right? They're going to wake up on Wednesday morning. And they're going to make their takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Because that's what you and I are doing. The days of tashriq, we're going to now change to talbiyah. It's going to be Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And now we are praising Allah for having allowed us to be in Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Our sacrifice will be prioritized and done. We are going to go throw the jamarat at one of the jamra, not all three, just the jamrat al-aqaba. And we are going to cut and remove uh, our, our cells from the state of ihram. And we're going to go for many of us to perform tawaf and sa'd. Not everyone, not all groups are going to go. It will depend on when we get to Mina. When we get and, and we see what kind of crowd, what kind of heat is on that day. You are able and allowed to delay the tawaf till second day, third day, or even later, inshallah. So if the conditions are not prime, we will make a decision as a, uh, as a, as a group leaders as to whether we go and venture forward or not. Usually we try to get it done on the first day as quick as possible, inshallah. On the next day, Day number four, which is the 11th of Dhul Hijjah. Now, all that is left is that we spend the night in Mina. Every night after Asr Maghrib, we're back in, in Mina. And we will throw our Jamarat. Now, I can only mention this for the MCDC group. Uh, we have the luxury of buses that pick us up and take us towards our hotel in Mecca. Because we are at the edge of the Jamarat. So we just walk out. 300 meters and we're on the side of the road the buses are able to get there we get onto the buses so you and i we will spend more than half of the night in mina and at one o'clock the buses will be ready and we'll spend all day in mecca all you know fajr have our hotel breakfast have all of that and then at maghrib we come back with the buses throw our jamarat spend the four hours mashallah there are nice talks and and other wonderful guests who will join us we have little mini uh, conferences, then we get onto the buses again and go back to our hotel, inshallah. So that is the arrangement for MCDC. But because uh, al, um, uh, the Mu'aysam doesn't have roadside access, uh, then it is a walk back and forth. There is only a walk back and forth. And then three days later, then the buses begin to have access for that, inshallah. Okay? So for the next two days, the 11th and the 12th, it is the same. You walk out from Mina, throw the Jamarat. For those who have to go back to their tents, they go back to their tents. For those who go on to Mecca after half of the night, they can spend it in all of the day in Mecca, come back to the tents in the evening, throw the Jamarat. Usually we throw the Jamarat in the evening. Usually we will throw it in the evenings uh, because it's sunnah to do it after Salatul Dhuhr. So we don't do it in the mornings, inshallah. Nothing early in the morning. 
uh, before the prayer. Yes, sister. I don't want to comment on that. Uh, I do, uh, you can go back to Mecca. Your hotel is there, but it's a walk to there. And then you have to come back to Mina, which is, so then it becomes double the distance. So, yes, it will be, it will be comfortable, inshallah. You will be comfortable, inshallah. Yeah, don't worry about it. That's what everybody does. Wallahi, it's, uh, uh, I remember being homeless in Mina. Homeless in Mina, wallahi, is the best. Yani, you're, you're walking and people say, Assalamu alaikum, where are you going? Oh, oh come have some tea. You're like, alhamdulillah. Uh, you, homeless in Mina is, a, uh, yani, is beautiful. The imams of the haram, I, I, I will send you photos of Sheikh al Hudayfi, the imam of the Prophet's masjid, for 45 years, homeless in Mina. No tent, no nothing. Nobody recognizes him because he's not wearing the gold and the head, and he's just sitting on the side of uh, the sidewalk and he's eating some corn. I said, Chef, where He goes, Hada Mukhayyami. Where's your tent? He goes, Right here. I was like, All right, I'll sit with you. Wallahi. Right? So, those will be some beautiful memories you have. And for my MCDC group, for those who want to come and take and pay a visit, inshallah, we will walk out to you one of the days. And enjoy our time with you, inshallah. Have some of your food. Inshallah. Maybe you have corn. Inshallah. Right? Be on the lookout for Mina ice cream. Beautiful, mashallah. Only thing better than Mina ice cream is Arafa ice cream. Inshallah. 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 All right? So that will end the five days, right? Tarwiya, water. Arafa. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Then the big day, the longest finger, the biggest day, the hardest day. You are leaving Muzdalifa. In the night you're in Muzdalifa. You go to Mina, Jamarat, cutting of the hair, removing of uh, the, the slaughter is done, and doing your tawaf and your sa'i. It's a long day. And then making your way back to Mina. It's a, it's a, mashallah, a great adventure. For Al Bayt people, what they do is after they do their tawaf, they go to the hotel and they rest. And then they bring everybody back. They will all walk back or they bus back to the edge and then they walk back in Mina, inshallah. It'll be a, a good exercise. Backpacks, yes. Yeah. Uh, you will leave some stuff in Mina so that you don't have to care, like extra clothes, leave it in Mina, these kind of things, but take your essentials with you, definitely, inshallah. Yes. Yes. 13th, we are done. It is the shortened Hajj. So we will throw our last Jamarat. If you don't leave Mina by Salatul Asr on the 13th, you must stay the 14th day, which is party time in Mina. Because everybody leaves, and then Mina is yours. All the extra food, all the extra ice cream. And uh, you have to understand, Hajj is meant to be Eid, right? So in our tents, we have like the Hajj Olympics, inshallah. So we'll put little cups, and then you'll extra Jamarat stones, you throw it. The ones who, mashallah, are saying, you know, so it's, 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 it's not just, uh, yani, it's meant to be. Uh, a, a party atmosphere. You have done a phenomenal act of ibadah, mashallah. The sister's tent is always rocking, mashallah. You hear the sister, you say, where, where are they? Are they in Mina? What are they doing today? Allahu Akbar. But this is, this is how it was even at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your ibadah leads you to appreciating what you have done. There is a, a sense of joy. The hugs you will give strangers on the day of Arafah. Where as the sun sets and then your body just shakes. SubhanAllah, I just, I just finished Arafah. I just spent a whole day with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your body, and you just, everybody around you is your, Wallahi, it's an un, unimaginable feeling. May Allah reward us with it many, many more times and allow us to, re, to, to take people to experience it with us. Uh, Allahumma ameen. Final thing that I wanted to say, inshallah, is I, did, I don't want you to dwell on the legal aspects of the Hajj. What do I mean by that? I don't want you to dwell 
uh, if this happens and then this, uh, you know, the what ifs, let it happen naturally. And I want you to feel assured that our Sharia meets all of the demands and all of the questions you will have. But there is one question that is sister sensitive that is going to arrive. And I know it's going to arrive soon. So the concept of the menstrual cycle, it's a cycle because it arrives, and I'm, I'm not shy to talk about the menstrual cycle. There's no question you have about it that I have not received or have answered numerous times, all right? So don't feel shy that tonight there is a session by uh, Sheikh Umm Jamal. It's a live one. I put the link on. It's a Zoom one for the sisters. You can watch the repeat of it, inshallah, right? And I will send you uh, the book that I've written. It's called Reborn. And it has a section, Frequently Answered Questions for Sisters about their menstrual issues. It has a, a dedicated section on that. So you can do that reading. Where you can't find an answer or you need more clarity, come back. Send a private text message to myself. We have with us, with MCDC, six qualified sisters. Sister Manahil, Sister Ibtisam, Sister Rahima. All of them, 20 Hajj plus. Have been, mashallah, Hajj warriors, mashallah, right? Them and their husbands and, and their families, mashallah, tabarakallah. So we, with our MCDC group, we were looking at the imams and the sheikhs with us. We have over 320 Hajj under us. Like amongst the people who are traveling with us, those who are advised, more than 320 Hajj completed, alhamdulillah. So there's no question that you won't be able to ask one of the sisters, one of the brothers, what, somebody will have an answer for you. How do we deal with the menstrual cycle? Should I take um, a pill to stop my menstrual? So I'm going to leave that choice to you, but I'm going to tell you, if you have not already begun regimenting your menstrual cycle with the pill from three months back, what is going to happen is you're going to be taking the pill, but when it is your menstrual cycle, it will come as spotting and it will arrive. You're not going to be, and I know there's doctors with us, they can educate us more on that. But my experience is the same sisters who began to take it, like say two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or I'm going to take it on the day, or this is going to stop it, that there is going to be some bleeding, and it might even be bleeding, and then stop, and then bleeding, and then stop, and it's going to cause you greater grief. Greater grief. So how do we fix it? It's a very simple situation. If you, when we are leaving uh, Kuala Lumpur, if there is a sister who has her menstrual or who is imminent, she is going to make her umrah and the niyyah, all of us will make this niyyah, that is based on the ability to complete. So I'm going to say to you, we're going to make the talbiyah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِالْعُمْرَةِ فَإِنْ حَبَسَنِي حَابِسْ فَمَحَلِّ حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي حَبَسْتَنِي Oh Allah, I have come to perform umrah. And if I am stopped from finishing the Umrah for any reason, then wherever I am stopped, grant me its reward. So you're going to travel with me and you're hopeful. You're hopeful that, you know, I've had it for four days, five days. Maybe it's going to stop. So you say, okay, Sheikh, I'm going to wait another, maybe another day. You don't come down to Umrah with us. You wait because it's going to stop because you still have two or three days before Hajj. So you remain in Ihram for those two days and we will send somebody with you to do Umrah, inshallah, you will meet it. Because we have time. If you are just beginning it, then you are going to, you have to enter Mecca in Ihram. You have to enter Mecca in Ihram. And you're going to make that declaration. If we come on the day of the eighth day or the seventh day of Dhul Hijjah, you're going to break your Ihram by cutting your hair and khalas. It's as if you have done the Umrah without doing the Umrah. Because you have been deterred by a natural cause. And Allah is the most merciful. Allah is the most merciful. So then you are going to have a, a, a new shower, even though you're in your menstrual. You're going to have a new shower and you're going to make a new niyyah for hajj. لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ حَجًّا And then by the time we finish our arafa, our mudda, all of these kind of things, you come back. If you are still waiting for it, you can do your tawaf when? Second day, third day, fourth day, no problem. So you, you then have more than 14 days almost to find your hajj complete. The requirement of hajj is only four pillars. One tawaf, 
one tawaf, one sa'i. This is if you're not doing tamattu, one sa'i, right? Ihram, which you're going to enter with it, insha'Allah, and arafah. That's it. You do those four. Anything else is fixable. So if you have not already begun to regiment your menstrual, don't. Don't start taking it now. In my opinion, after many years of hajj, it is too late. That's my opinion. Unless there's some new drugs, maybe our doctors can provide some assistance with that, inshallah, that are you know clear cut, that there's no spotting, there's nothing on that day. Otherwise, it becomes a bigger kind of concern for you, inshallah. Any questions on that? Yes. 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 So we're going to have a complete ghusl, like all of us, all of the brothers, everybody. We're going to get ourselves ready for new talbiyah, uh, new ihram. We're going to have all of that, and then we will head forward. So you'll do it like everybody else. Make sure it's a full cleansing. And even if you remain in that state, you'll do your tawaf at the very end. All that is missing is your salah. What happens, the question then is, what happens if I begin before I am able to do tawaf al ifada and we have to leave? Then the correct answer is that you will have a ghusl. Even in your menstrual straight, you will make tawaf al ifada But you will not pray the two raka'ah at maqam Ibrahim. That's it. So you will make tawaf. Everybody will make tawaf al-ifada once, insha'Allah. Right? Why are we allowed to make tawaf al-ifada? Because uh, tawaf al-ifada is a rukn, but being in a state of tahara is a wajib. So what you will do is you will make the tawaf in the state of your menstrual, and you will expiate it, that I did it without tahara, but I have met the condition of the rukn. My hajj is valid. Okay, but we will do those details as they arise to those, and that's why I didn't want to get into the complexity of it. But I want to give you an example that our Sharia maintains it. You, nobody's going to go and say, "Oh my goodness, I came all the way to Hajj and I couldn't finish my Hajj." It's not possible, inshallah. Yes, doctor. Mu'aysam, yes. 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 So on the eighth day, the buses will continue all the way through the night, bringing in two million people into Mina. So from Mina, in the morning of Arafah, the buses will come again and take you. And then they close the boundary for buses because now everybody walks back. Yes? No. So on the 14th day or the 13th day in the evening, when most people have begun vacating Mina, uh, and not everybody is able to stay in Mecca. Some will be staying in Aziziyah and other places. So they don't take buses. They will walk through Aziziyah. And they never go back to Mecca uh, unless they take their own public transport. So 90% of Hujjaj stay in Aziziyah, in Qudai, in all of the surrounding areas. They don't have hotels like you in Mecca. You will be able then, so there's not as much strain on the buses. You, but in the beginning, everybody's coming in with them, inshallah. So leaving out of Mina on the final day, it's just like on the first day, arrival buses. Last day is departure bus. You're welcome. Good question. Any other questions, inshallah? Yes. So on particular days that the Prophet made Qasr, we make Qasr. So on the eighth day when he made it to Mina, he prayed Qasr. So we'll make Qasr. Other days, you are going to follow the imam who is local to you from the people of Mecca. So you will pray. Just say you pray in the haram, you're going to pray whatever they pray. You're not going to join. You're not going to do anything. 
Yeah, so you you will be led in prayers, inshallah. I, I will always recommend for you when you are there not to be uh, on your own unless there is a, a extenuating circumstance. So if you're sick and you need to join and you need to make cuts, yes. But generally speaking, the qasr is only done once we make our way towards Mina. No. Yeah. Yes, sister. Yes. 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 Uh, so in the forms, we ask you to put special requests. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so that's why that's why we sent it for flight and you know so uh, it is a special request right I don't want to leave on this day I need to leave on this day so there are two flights that are going to leave from Perth uh, the one that I will be on the early flight is Batik it's at 6 35 in the morning and it arrives at around 12 30 1 p.m and we will have the rest of the day and then sleep the night and then the morning and then half of the day. The next flight leaves at 2 a.m., the Malaysian Airlines flight, arrives at 7 a.m. And then you will have probably six hours to freshen up and then get back on the plane. The bulk of us are going to be on the Batik air flight because there aren't enough seats on the Malaysian Airlines flight. So uh, message me, inshallah, let me know which one and kind of why. The only reason, the reason why um, most of my group will be Batik, uh, because I like to just have you as ducklings and a mother goose and, you know, just going to keep you together. There will be some who I, we don't have room for on Batik, about eight or nine who will be on the Malaysian Airlines flight. Uh, if, if it's essential for somebody that I can't leave on this one, uh, let us know, inshallah. Yeah, I can put in a request. Yes. So there were two. One that uh, I'll send them both out again. I'll send the, the last one out that begins with flights. It says flights, hotels, accommodations, please fill in this form. And I apologize to you for having to fill it. That's the one. Do you remember that one? That's the annoying one. I know. I'm sorry. But that one automates your train ticket and it puts you seated next to your spouse. So because that one had like specific. Yeah. Pro, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome to inshallah. We'll index it inshallah. 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 Any other? Yes, brother. Yes. Yes. It it, it it's actually one of the it's one of the biggest things to manage for me myself is to uh, manage husbands and wives. It's one of the biggest tests in Hajj. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, wallahi, it's true. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, when you, when you have that in mind, see, and that's why thinking about it, it's, it that's what Ihram is all about. The concept of ihram is it puts you in a state where you're thinking about little things, but now you begin thinking about bigger things, right? I have to think about every word. I have to think about how, you know, my it's, it's haram to raise your voice in Mecca. Yani, yani, you're a muhrim, you're going to say, ah, come here. Ya, haram. Everybody looks at you, لبيك اللهم لبيك. Lower your voice. لا ترفع أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي. Above the Prophet's grave, it says, do not raise your voice above the level of the messenger side. In Medina, you, you can't raise your voice. Haram. So when you begin thinking of these things, it's uh, the purpose of not cutting nails, not removing hair, is that you're thinking about small things 
that are distracting you from some of the normal things that you've been doing and taking for granted. So now I have to be, oh, I touch soap, I touch this. I do so now it makes you more sensitive to some of the more urgent things. And alhamdulillah, you're already beginning to think, <laughs> wallahi, wallahi, beginning to think about it. It's a, it's, it's a good start. May Allah, Allahumma tamim lana al-khayr. Yes, Marzan. Yes. 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 So if you are with MCDC, if you are with Al Bayt, we have uh, special arrangements there. You will not need to bring yoga mats or sleeping bags. I will tell you, bring with you the cover that you are given in Arafah. So everybody's given a, a blanket. I always ask you to bring that with you because then it can become your musalla, it can become your, you know, keep the mosquitoes away. So I'm going to give the top three muzdalifa tips. All right. And I'll repeat these again, inshallah. Uh, top three muzdalifa tips. Don't camp near the bathroom. Uh, because the bathrooms, they overflow. And when the cleaners come to clean, they just push water out. Right? Don't go anywhere near the bathroom. Uh, make your last actions in Arafah a shower, a bathroom, and have very little food in Arafah. I will not let you eat too much in Arafah. I will remind you. I will look at you and say, Labbaik Allahumma. Put down that biryani, akhi. <laughs> you here, I'll be like, Labbaik, dua, dua, brother. <laughs> And you say, Sheikh, the dua got entered. Look, biryani. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. So, uh, you know, uh, regimenting the food becomes very important. Um, because Muzdalifa, uh, subhanAllah, uh, maybe Sister Maryam will be watching this. Because I sent it to my old Hajj group. So all of my old Hajj groups are still budding. Even until now, right? from Hajj 1431 or something. So there's a sister, her name is Maryam from Toronto. Uh, we got to Mustalifa and uh, her husband who, uh, mashallah, he's a good brother. Uh, we camped, we went on top of a hill a little bit near the fence, all the brothers on the outside, all the sisters in the middle. There's no husband wife. You have to make a block because people, when they come, they just run over everybody, right? So there's brothers who are stationed on guard. Nobody cross, they, this kind of thing. And we did our Maghrib Isha and we woke everybody up an hour and a half, two hours before Fajr. Uh, that's my second tip is visit Muzdalifa's bathroom Two hours before Fajr, before everybody wakes up, before everybody needs wudu for Fajr. The sister didn't wake up. And I just remember the sister, she was just standing there shaking like this. <laughs> when she hears this, she will laugh. She was just standing like this, shaking. Sheikh, I want to go home. <laughs> and I'm like, you're in Muzdalifa. There's no home. There's no helicopter even. <laughs> even if you want to go home, I can't take you. Sheikh, I need to go home right now. <laughs> she had gone in and the bathrooms were just, subhanAllah, just a mess. And I said, no, no. She goes, Sheikh, I need to go home. I can't take this anymore. I've lost, I say, Labbaik Allah. Her husband is, uh, you know, massaging. I go, Labbaik Allah. <laughs> it's just compounding the problem. <laughs> And subhanAllah, uh, you know, I said, look, uh, close your eyes. I want you to think of your children back home. And I want you to think of what you have waiting for you. And I want you to make this time dua for them. You need to make dua for them. Don't make it about yourself. So come, let me find a nice place for you. We made her sit in the middle. And I went and, and got a, uh, across the road. Uh, I went out of the compound. There's a fire station. So I said to the fire people, listen, I got a special case. <laughs> she's 
she needs to use your so I grabbed him, I kissed him on the head. I said, Yaqi, but all Hatrawa Hilbet and it was Wah. Hurma Wah. Only one. I said only once. Because in his mind, it's Hajj. You let one, you gotta. He said, oh, bil khalf, bil khalf. come around the other side. I said, okay. I took her and her husband. I said, go around. She came out of their bathroom like a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, Allahu Akbar. She said, Sheikh, you are in my dua for the rest of my life. Sister Maryam, <laughs> you better keep that up. That dua, I want it for years, inshallah. Wallahi. All right. So, there will be, you know, subhanAllah challenges. The second is uh, don't go in the rush. Uh, be prepared. It is not the norm. Regiment your food in Arafah. Don't leave Arafah unless you are good for the night. As best as you can, inshallah. All right. Third tip for Muzdalifah is uh, sleep. Like try to find your rest. Because the next day there's lots of walking for everybody. Doesn't matter who you are. Lots of walking, uh, lots of tiredness. Uh, hydrate yourself, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant khayr and barakah. But wallahi ladhi la ila ghayru. I know there's people from the Maldives, there's people from wherever you're from. There is no trip that you will take that will give you more than what you invest in it than hajj. But it depends on what you want from it, right? So if you're there to be a tourist, you're just going to get the tourist stuff and you're going to be let down. But if you're there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for your dua, for your iman, for your, you know, your courage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have an incredible time. Uh, last thing for my dear brothers and sisters from the Dur group. And I know there's probably a few of you here and you're hearing me talking about Al-Bayt and MCDC. Uh, we have not forgotten you. Insha'Allah, uh, one of our friends, uh, Dr. Irfan, uh, he's an anesthesiologist. He is going in Hajj with you. We're providing him specialist training to look after you in whatever circumstances you are in, insha'Allah. We're working hard behind the scenes and all these other things. You will have a good uh, resource, insha'Allah, okay? So we're giving him the training he needs and the help that he needs. Uh, he will be a guide within the group. All right. So Dr. Ifan, you will not make a mistake. You will know who he is. Tall, beard to the floor, mashallah. He was, oh, this is a brother. Sheikh Yahya said, look for the beard. Come on. All right. Dr. Ifan is a, a wonderful man. He's from Melbourne. And inshallah, uh, for your group. He will be a, a wonderful resource. We're investing uh, a lot of time and energy in him, inshallah. Okay? So don't, don't be scared. Don't be nervous. We got you, inshallah. You will have a good hajj. Yes, my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, my brother. Yes. 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 So, um, Remember what I was telling you about those hajj kits? All right. Uh, in it, there's a wudu spray bottle. You can make your own spray bottle. Uh, for the sisters as well, because tawaf, one of the requirements is that you, uh, yani most of the imams will say you have to begin it with wudu. When there is severe ziham and you can't, if you can find a place for zamzam. But in that pack, there's a little spray bottle. It's a spray bottle that you're spraying like this, and then you spray your arm. So for the sisters under your abaya, you're just going to spray, and then you make your wudu. For the brothers, it's a little bit easier. You can find any place, right? Uh, but you will renew your wudu in the tawaf and so on to maintain it, because you can't go out and come back, right? So you will try to keep your wudu as much as possible. I do re uh, you know, recommend for you, for those who are going through KL, I spoke to the, the people over there. They said that they will deliver free of charge to the hotel over there because the FedEx, I think, was coming like $30, $40, about the same as the pack. But that's just how it is. That's just Federal Express. So if you want the pack there, it'll be delivered at the hotel. I think there's maybe 40, 50 people already signed up. Sign up. It is definitely worth it. All of this stuff is natural and certified halal, Malaysian, halal, you know, Malaysians, mashallah. 
everything is stamped, even water, mashallah, halal, right? So it's good for you, inshallah. You will be ready for that, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. I'll bet everybody, everybody who is transiting in KL, they will bring it to the hotel. Uh, what, what is, oh, your flight is Doha. No, that's a Doha flight. You're on your own, brother. I can't help you, brother. Yeah, <laughs> inshallah. I, I can't help Doha. <laughs> yes, sister. Mm. Yes. Uh, one of the reasons I, I kind of oversell it to you is so that you're ready. So when I give you such a high, a high phobia, and then you go there and it's better, then you feel at ease. So you'll feel better there, inshallah. Who, who are you with? Al-Bayt, inshallah. Uh, look, um, I, I don't want to broadcast this, but uh, I'll talk to you about them in a second. Actually, will, any other questions, inshallah? All right. Jazakumullah khair, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.